Now, two stories about finding ways to engage students from low-income households. We begin with a new way to learn about a nucleus and other science concepts. I recently visited a New York classroom where they're using rap music to teach kids science. The characteristic of the organism that's more beneficial for the environment is what gets passed on. Teaching a morning biology lesson in any high school is hard. In underperforming urban schools with low test scores, it's even harder. So what was the point of the, the lab that you're going over right now? Who could tell me what the point of that lab was, of the simulation? What was the point? What was the point? What was the point of the simulation? Was there a point to it? To, to figure out how to come up with natural selection. To figure out how to come up with natural selection. What is natural selection, though? The challenge has brought Chris Emden, a professor from Columbia University's yeah. Teachers College, back into the classroom. Emden's mission, to find a way to make science something these kids can relate to. His idea, to use hip-hop music to unlock science ideas. Use the iPod to help you get natural selection. What happens if a song is just not popping anymore? Then you won't select it to be in your new playlist. If an attribute of an organism, right, if it's not needed anymore, then it won't get passed on to the next generation. In other words, it wouldn't make the new playlist. Does that, does that make sense? Emden has partnered with 10 New York City public high schools like this one, Bronx Compass, for a pilot project using hip-hop to engage low-performing students, particularly minorities. According to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, or NAEP, only 4% of African-American seniors nationally were proficient in sciences. The basic construct is they love hip-hop, they don't like science. Let's find a way to figure it out. The new model curriculum requires students to write raps about science, reinforcing vocabulary and the concepts covered in class. It's called Science Genius. And you can put mutation and adaptation and then work backwards. Think you got it? I'm going to leave for like two minutes. I'm going to come back and see what you got. What the best science educators have told us for a very long time that the best case scenario in science classrooms is that it's interdisciplinary. So they're learning the science content, but they're also learning to write. And they're also learning reflection. And they're also learning critical thinking. And they're also learning revision. And they're also learning performance, all while learning science, as opposed to the traditional classroom where they're just learning to soak in the information and hopefully give it back you know, a couple of days later on a quiz or an exam. Why do giraffes have long necks? Under the direction of Emden, Columbia University graduate students visit a regular science class once a week to help craft raps. I do this and I get it, a natural selection. We're talking about a rabbit, it's adaptive like his parents. You know, this is not just kids rhyming. They're, 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 they're rubrics for assessment. A kid can't come in there and just have a, a really simple, superficial rap and saying, you know, I'm here to play, this is DNA. That wouldn't work. That kid would not pass a science genius class. You have to be able to understand the, 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 the nuances of what does DNA stand for? You know, what are the base pairs? You know, what, what's the history of DNA? To create a rap about DNA, you've got to know the content. A surprise visit from Emden's most important collaborator and co-founder of the science genius hip hop science experiment creates the biggest stir. The rapper Jizza from one of the greatest rap groups of all time, Wu-Tang Clan, is a 10th grade dropout turned science geek. He adds star power to the project and shows the students how it's done. Gravity that's going mad, clouds of dust and debris, moving at colossal speeds, they crush an MC. Since this rap region is heavily packed with stars, internal mirror and the telescope, notice the guards. From far away, we blink as a light to stroll with great distance of space between precise globes. When you bring an artist in that's, that's a hip-hop artist and children are so consumed with hip-hop music, then it's a way for them to let their guard down or at least be comfortable enough to give it an ear or listen. For young people whose voices have been silenced, they are forever in search of an opportunity to be heard and they, they don't have a tool to be heard in schools necessarily all the time. And so they look to hip hop to have a voice. And what we're doing now is saying, okay, you have a voice in hip hop and hip hop is separate from schools, but now we're giving you a voice in the classroom. And that changes everything and that's what Jizza does. It seemed to change everything for student Keegan Dillard. He walks through rapping 
I was like, oh, is this for real? I really asked somebody to pinch me. But Keegan says even without a visit from a famous rapper, the hip hop science genius class is motivation enough. I lost my passion for science. So when I came here and everything, I was just like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to bomb it. Definitely. But now that they're mixing it up with music, I feel like I can get like an A plus. Does it help you actually learn the science? I'm sure it's more fun. But are you actually learning more science? Oh, <laughs> believe me, I am. I actually sit home looking up different science terms before we actually learn them. And then I actually like read the definitions and all that. And then I put them into my raps and everything. So it, it really is helping. I'm starting to, you know, get back on track with my science. You rapping. The Science Genius Project will finish with a battle of the best raps between the 10 pilot classrooms at the end of the school year. Jizza will judge the raps, and the best ones will appear on the website Rap Genius. I could take what I saw earlier today and show it to science teachers around the country, mm -hmm. and certainly science department chairmen across the country, and they'd say two things. It's a gimmick, mm -hmm. and are they learning any science? Right. So I'll start off with the, with the gimmick. Uh, everything in education is a gimmick. The, 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 the present world, particularly of urban education, is filled with gimmicks. Un unfortunately, those gimmicks have no grounding in the youth understandings and culture. You know, every single day there's a new curriculum, uh, there are new standards. But I want to talk about the larger issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and the larger issue is the fact that there is an obsession with these, uh, with these metrics that in reality don't tell us anything about teaching and learning. They really, really don't. They, they tell you how much a kid can soak in information, but and spit it back out at you. But they don't tell you anything about the kid who, through being in this classroom, finally sees himself as a scientist. You see, I'm an organism changing every minute. I'm not too good at science, but I'ma still get in it. I remix my lifestyle, change it through my lifeline. I mutate the flow and I go with the instinct as a lyricist. My mind is a cave, Darwin turning in his grave. And I keep in motion like human evolution. How do I measure Keegan, who came in in the beginning and was bored to death and didn't like science and had his head down for the entire academic year, who all of a sudden is opening up his book and doing homework and crafting science rhymes and saying, you know what, I can declare a science major. There is no test that exists right now that can measure that. And that is more powerful than any metric that anybody can use to measure what happens in classrooms. Talking about rabbits and natural selection. Emden says that for many inner city youth, science, technology, engineering, and math will continue to remain elusive without interventions like Science Genius. What we're doing here, at the very least, is allowing kids to see that they can be brilliant, that what they know already is intelligent, that they can see new possibilities. If we really want to change STEM education, when we talk about as a nation that we don't have enough people to fill the kind of STEM jobs that we have, and what we have to do is focus on the folks who've been pushed out because they're the numbers that we need to push back in. Emden says he's confident that at the end of the year, attendance will be up and grades will be up and that the science genius model is easily scaled up from a handful of New York schools to students around the country. And we have more from the Wu-Tang Clan's Jizza. Watch him perform material from his upcoming album, Dark Matter, and create your own science rap for a chance to win a shout out from the legendary hip hop artist. Instructions for composing and submitting a video for our contest are on our website.